Gentlemen, how are you? Back. Crypto sniper at you uh, talking about, wait for it, Bitcoin. Yes. So through the 50K, we are knocking out these big milestones together, aren't we? We're talking, we're staying in touch with each other. We're sharing this big journey. The great big long. They stole the term, the big short. I'm here with the big long. And it's the big long of most things against failing fiat. Reset it is indeed. Um, further to which, uh, my great concern on the reset part is we don't get to keep too much of it. The Bolshevik communists are going to give us a big old reaming at the end of it. Hence why I called it the big schlong. Um, but anyway, uh, jokes apart, we're here to talk about crypto. We're going to here to talk about Bitcoin. We heard the total market cap has gone through the 1.5 trillion. That's right. The 1.5 trillion mark. We'll be looking at total. These big landmarks falling, 1.5. We're going to look at total because sometimes we get a cleaner chart overall of total money coming into the all basket of crypto, not just store value Bitcoin, um, if that is what uh, Bitcoin is deemed to be, which many seem to think. And also, we had a trade for you, but unfortunately... The problem is we need more numbers on our channel to uh, stream more often. And uh, we kind of had it for you yesterday and it's already moved a whole bunch. And yes, it's Binance coin. So we're going to show you Binance token, but you guys are going to be late. Unfortunately, you're not in the community. You wouldn't have been talking with us. Yeah, book a link below. Join us if you want to. Um, not that I'm in this one. I didn't take this one. I actually in disgust towards the exchange of Binance. I moved a whole bunch off Binance. Funnily enough, I hate using the exchange, but there's a reason why they might be getting strong and that's got a lot to do uh, with the Binance, uh, the chain that they have set up, which is dealing with the problem that Ethereum has with the cost of gas, etc, etc. So there is real upside movement in Binance. We'll be looking in the charts at Binance versus USDT. We'll even take a look at Binance versus F, uh, given that secondary option chain that is coming into play there. And we'll also be giving a look at Binance versus BTC itself. But let's also start when we head to the charts with the great God market itself, Bitcoin versus Tether. We'll use the Binance exchange. Why not? Uh, still one of the most popular uh, and biggest. And we'll have a little look about where we've been and where we are now. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about when we head to the charts. I'm going to tell you a little bit about something I'm regularly warning my community about is you get, you get the chart draw that your behavior most behests. In other words, you keep getting put in front of you the obstacle that most trips you up. And one of the trickiest uh, obstacles um, that most trip up the retail trader is this form of structure. So learning to master this is truly important and it's kind of hard and difficult. So let, without further ado, go up to the Bitcoin chart um, and have a little look at some of what I've drawn for you. So here it comes. There before us, BTC, not lots of scribbles and lines. Um, here's what happens. When you are in a grinding up market, so we did a couple of things right. We've done a couple of things not so uh, well. So let's have a little look over them. Coming out of the great falling wedge, you might remember it as the TG Pink falling wedge. Uh, bring my draw tool into view here. Let's show you this. This was one of the parts that we actually didn't do too badly on. We said, this is not a descending triangle. So we're talking about that uh, over there. This is not a descending triangle. It is a congestion continuation pattern with a slight downward tilt um, that's going to wind up and break you up. And then we got in really nicely early on our splitter on a wedge. You'll, it's called a splitter. You'll learn more about why we do it. We're the only people that do it. Uh, there's real reasons and the benefits it gives. But you've got a little wind-up fractal there that took us to the outer extremity of the wedge. We got the elongated muskiness first pump, which uh, fizzled, set up an inverted head and shoulder there, and then we started trading up. And then we got the Tesla, Tesla, stage two, uh, Bitcoin, 1.5 billion of it bought um, by his muskiness. And that was your second uh, pump of push for Bitcoin. That took us very, very nicely up here. We actually got a little bit early out. You might recall we were watching the total market cap. We'll go to that chart later. It's coming. Um, but we were getting out around here, um, which was when Bitcoin needed was at the uh, 44K mark. And it continued a fair bit further. We expect a little bit of that. It 
that targets aren't like stop on the penny. It's not meant to be like that. It would be very dangerous if it was. They should always be overrun. They should always be overrun. But you then went into what's typically grinding structure. Now, this has been foxy. And I'll be frank, um, despite trading many, many years, I still gave up a bit of Bitcoin there. We'd had an amazing run. We took a number of times. I was lucky enough to get out of the Elon pump there. And then we had a good run up to there. So that was very profitable. I took it twice, that little run and that little run, substantial amounts. Um, so we stacked some Bitcoin of great value there. But we gave back in this period here. Why? Because it's one of the hardest things to trade. And it was doubly tricky with us. And I was post-mortemizing this with um, the community and said, this one would have probably hurt me any time, uh, any time that it happened. And there's a reason why. Um, wedges, rising wedges, guys, are the new up melt-ups. So in actual fact, the rising wedge is almost like what you typically have as a downward continuation, like the legacy previous fall, um, falling wedge I've just shown you in terms of coming up. What happens though is rather there's so much FOMO buying that any, any sell-offs are being bought back up. Um, and then instead of creating pressure, you keep making these marginally higher highs. Now, marginally higher highs are absolutely fatal to traditional technical analysts, um, particularly or traders, support and resistance traders the worst. Because what absolutely happens is people buy the new highs. Um, so you get taken in here, as I've illustrated before, a number of times, don't be that guy You're buying the new highs, you get washed out to the downside. Buy the new highs, you get washed out to the downside. Buy the new highs, you get washed out to the downside. And you got twice there because you got another new high on this shooting star type candle washed out to the downside, only for it to go up anyway. So it's kind of wanting to go up, but making sure it doesn't take you up with it. That's the game. I told you, but trading is often like riding um, the mechanical bull. The whole game is just staying in the macro long. You'll look back at this and you'll say, 10 grand. If I just, many, many of the retail guys, you're sitting there, how, much, how many Bitcoin did you have when it was 10,700, first cup gold nugget was just breaking to how many you have now? And whilst in dollar fiat terms, many of you will be up, you'll often be down on your Bitcoin. And that is a fatal error. The game is to accumulate. Otherwise, you should just lock it up and leave it for 100,000. Um, and I dispersed about 10% of my Bitcoin through this because it took me in a couple of times. Why? Because we actually had an earlier draw rising wedge in there. So let's wipe that face a little bit. Let's drop the time frame. It was super tricky spell. So some of you have just come out of a super tricky spell and you might be feeling a bit down. You haven't done much value add. Uh, in fact, Bitcoin might be at new all-time highs and you might not quite be at all-time fiat highs. Why? Because you've shared Bitcoin. That's why. And this is the natural obstacle that gets put in front of you. So this was our first wedge draw that we were doing inside the community. Um, and then, of course, that failed. This particular passage, that one right there, was outlier aggressive sell-off. Whoops, let's get the square. That's not the shape I wanted. I wanted to highlight this sell-off passage was unnaturally big. Normally what happens in the rising wedges is the movements get smaller, the down legs get smaller and the higher highs, the whole thing is calming. Your historical volatility, look at it along the lows, generally coming down, 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 down. This was a little bit unfriendly. And actually it was a harder sell-off here. You'll note we had a falling wedge there. That's a nice way to go down. A little bit down, a little bit pushback. A little bit down a bit more, a little bit pushback. A little bit down a bit more, a little bit pushback. So it's, it's a staircasing event and it's tightening and it's getting less on the down and less on the up. It's calming. Um, that's a nice way to go down. We love that. And that set up, broom, nice little up move. Marvelous. This kind of way of going down, high hang time, hanging real high and then spill like that. That's like a, oh, hey, that's not welcome. That's a little bit of a mini trip to Manila. Maybe not the whole way, maybe just Lagos, but it's not a nice place to end up anyway. Um, and you don't want to be there. So that's kind of what happened uh, with that. It was a bit excessive and it was a bit violent. This down move was far more fast than just even that worst part of it. But it got bought up again. So the plunge got. So in, in the end, where you normally have your three impulse uh, rising wedges, you've got a complex uh, impulse. So you're learning some of the language we use in the community. You'll learn a whole bunch more. That would have been your second. If you click on the links below and book yourself a call. If we can't earn you 0.2 Bitcoin, 
in this period for an entire year, then you've wasted money that you wouldn't have made anyway, if we can't do that. That's what it comes down to, guys. Getting the updates, and you'll see what you've missed on BNB coin. Although, as I say, I didn't take it. So I'm not claiming it. A couple of the guys in the community did. We'll show you where it is now and what's left to do it. But let's first understand the God market. So second impulse there, week third. And then lots of fake new highs. Fake new highs, pullback. Fake new highs, pullback quite deep there. So this is a bleed up, but it's a nasty kind of bleed up. The worst thing you can do is to try trade that. The only thing you should be doing is you have a net bull bias and you have light leverage and you say, well, that complexity, that falling wedge, I'm going to leave that and I'm just going to rely on the appreciation. Most of what you would have done here would have ended up value destroying, the truth be told. Even if you're a legendary uh, trader, if you traded within that, in other words, apart from just holding the right way through it, because Bitcoin is higher here than it was down there. Simple. But the journey in getting there was foxy as hell. And when it should have been calmer, it suddenly got a bit more excited. And that can totally mess with your plans. Only light dip buying would have been a good strategy. You would have seen entries three or four times there. And light disbursements on marginally highs. So that's something you can think of next time if you think you're going into a rising wedge structure. Light dip buying. But that requires trading to a level and you're going to have to keep marching higher and also letting something play out to the downside, having the ammo, the leverage available, watching for that reversal in the sign for the move up and calling it. And that's kind of like catching falling knives. It's dangerous because the problem could be what if this rising wedge is a big throwdown one and there isn't a bounce and it goes all the way back down to who knows, 42,000 39,000, whatever, and we have a real bed wet. It could happen. We have the NASDAQ stinky stoink market going for a little tumble. Um, the treasuries are pointed out. If you're watching and following the market sniper channel, the interest rates are climbing and the bonds are falling. This is their debt market. Let's be clear. There's only really one bubble and it's debt. It's a fiat based debt system. That's it. That is the bubble. That's what's driving the power buying Bitcoin. People moving out of one asset into another. Negative real interest rates. In other words, to inflation, you're sitting with a piece of debt and it's going down. It's guaranteed in value. Um, and it might even get forgiven entirely for your new reset world. But anyway, I won't go into there. That's for Reset Sniper. So this has been a real tricky. Uh, so forgive yourself. You can't beat yourself up if you've if you've not trade if you've done some trading in there and you've not added value. It's absolutely natural, um, and it is what it is. And we've gone a little bit higher. Is this high conviction um, going up? No, it's a little bit of a walk up. It's a little bit of a walk up. And personally, if you ask me, what I'd like to see happen, I'd like all of us to not be leveraged in any situation in this trade and for us to have a good little shit of in the bed, basically, uh, and let it uh, take a dump uh, for six, seven thousand dollars base out and create a new, bigger, broader structure and then continue on upside. That would actually be more healthy. No one. You see, guys, by not having proper down legs with all this dip buying, you end up killing your up legs. Because it's the snapback ability of an overreacted downside that gives you the rebound ability for overshoot upside. So the big moves. You can't wish for small down legs and still expect to get only high up pumps, especially after what we've done in the time frame uh, that we've done it. And let's just remind you on the daily chart how the daily looks on Bitcoin. That's your daily. There's your 10K. Let's just reduce some of the jaws there. Um, this is not in log scale. That's why some of those lines were all over the place. But, you know, you were down here at 10.7. Gone like that. That was a great opportunity to get leverage long again. You had a nice smaller one there. And this was a great one to have got right, which we did reasonably well with, but got out too early. And the bleed up is continuing. What could you be forming here? Well, there could be some form of a rising wedge with some very steep degree of gradient there. That could again point to uh, a requirement for a bit of squaring up and then winding up again 
and go in again. That will give you a great entry trade there, but it might be foxy. It might do it in a falling wedge again with marginally lower lows. So every time you go, oh, that's the low, and then it rallies, and then you think that's it, it won't go lower, it rallies just through the previous low, takes any technical stops out. This was a technical stop killer. There was the low, then a marginally lower low. It just kept going just a bit more, and then it would rebound. It was like the market hated you. Well, I'm here to tell you it actually loves you, but it keeps putting obstacles in the way that best resemble the best obstacle for the constituent shoal of fish that are participating in that market and that is retail traders and institutional traders that are dip buying so you keep getting ascending structures like wedges um, with a high along the dip side so that's the curse however sometimes what can you do sometimes it's easier to see what's going on on a total basis so that's where we go to total so total's been a little bit uh, different, and this is where we kept you long if you were following this structure over here. Instead of being a falling wedge, it was upside continuation, and that gave us the greater degree of confidence to stay net long, and you had a good alt run. You've had the likes of DOT. You've had the likes of ADA. Keep adding. So sometimes you get an easier visual take on all the money coming into all crypto. Some of that money is going direct now. There was a time you had to go into Bitcoin first before you could buy any alts. Those days are long gone now. You can go, you can onboard from fiat into any, any uh, crypto um, in most places now, most of the big ones anyway. Um, so there is money that's coming into other projects too, direct, which doesn't have to be gateway via Bitcoin. So what do we make of this? Well, again, it's kind of still still going up. You might argue at a slight imperfect little squeeze in there. There was a little bit of a wick, but it's grindy. We're getting a little bit of there's a there's a there's a kind of gradient that we're being capped under. Um, could it shoot up out of that? It could, but it could also it could also take a well needed rest. Which one do I think it's going to do? Well, it's broken to the upside. It's continued to nibble. Um, but I have a feeling we'll trade under 50k one more time at least before we're going, you know, through through deep into the 60s uh, and into the 70s and to that magical 100k. And you'll be enjoying that with me here. We'll be talking about it and hopefully uh, some of you will be in the community, you'll be in it earlier or you'll be where you still are and we're still glad to have you and you'll be getting whatever we can give to you when we do give it to you. Um, by the way, I am watching the comments. I will give you five replies to the five best comments. Um, people wearing my face, putting in comments below that give WhatsApp groups and Telegram groups are naturally thieves and want to steal from you. Uh, if you see them, report them straight away. I would never share telephone numbers or funny, weird emails. The only way to engage with us is via the, the website, themarketsniper.com, where you can book a call, you can send us an email, you can fill in a contact form, you can do anything you want. Okay, that's the best way to do it. Support at the market sniper is the email. Great. So with that all said, um, Total, let's have a little look on a lower time frame to just explore this. Are we in a small little break within this grinding? Yes, but am I like hyper enthused by it like I was that previous setup where I was keeping you all along? Not overly. It could rest a little bit. When you look at it on these smaller time frames, as I say, this was a bit of an exceptional wick. Yes, that in essence was your entry long there and you've gone up, but this... Tip, tap, toe, hammer, shooting star, hammer, shooting star, shooting star now. Um, you could have a little roll over there. It's possible. And you could come back down to these levels. You could come back down to that range, possibly, or part the way and just have a small dip. I'm not feeling that I want to be leveraged anything right now in terms of Bitcoin or the general total market cap. So remember, what you're learning, look at total. When you're unsure about Bitcoin, look at total. What you can also do is, is there something specific for the alts? Because total is still dominated by Bitcoin. Now, the, this chart, I prefer a wee bit. Now, this is the alts. It hasn't gone and made new highs. Like Bitcoin is kind of just bleeding up, bleeding up, getting all the support and resistance traders killed with a dip back after going higher and then going more high and doing the same, squeezing its way up. This is actually almost better structure. I'd love to see this come off a bit. 
and go a bit boring quiet. And once again, I suspect continuation for the alts. And we are moving towards the alts because we're going to be talking to you about Binance token. That's what was in the, t the, the, the heading that we spoke of. This was a lovely falling wedge, by the way. That's how we like to go down. So you're learning a fair amount about it. Three distinct impulses traded on the breakup. You're starting to get a few free little bits of information that you can use in your trading. So you can earn your way in until you can become a top gun sniper and get handed the real, the real Barrett 50 caliber uh, weapon. And then you can go and shoot at some control structure people that want you to wear a nappy. That is uh, just a joke, purely for entertainment, by the way. Um, not a serious uh, suggestion. Um, but anyway... So top sniping will come with greater skills. That is a better structure. Okay, so that seems maybe alts are probably going to give us a better structure. Maybe we need them to come off a little bit and then we can go uh, to the upside. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's take you to the token in question and the trade you've kind of missed now. Uh, and that is Binance token. Now you haven't fully missed it because uh, by my reckoning, it's got a target still to come. Um, so let's just pull that down. So we've got it at 162. Now you could have been in from 133 down here. And you could have had it kind of tight as well for your protection of loss. But it seems, um, it seems it's not to be that it's going to give you a return move. Looked a little bit tired after making what we call a second interim where you're likely to rest and actually is forging its way up. So we are seeing 162 and we actually feel there'll be overperformance to that. So some of you might still want to take that. My only question is if you do, where's your stop loss if you're taking leverage? If you're investing and you'll hold your way through, that's fine. Um, but if you're trading with any leverage, which involves other people's money, you're going to get washed out potentially. What if we had a big sell-off on Bitcoin and Ethereum and this return down to this level? I personally would quite like it. I have orders still down there when it was over here, but it seems like it's moving the other way. So this is Binance coin. Now, this is the technical. By the way, it's been rather strong of late. So let's take it out. Now, as I say, I'm not a massive fan of the platform. Using the platform, it's clunky as all hell, as far as I'm concerned. You've got so many steps moving this wallet to that wallet. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a fanboy. I'm not, I don't shill anything for anybody, really. Um, I can say this is a big move, though. And I think what they've been doing in terms of, what is it called? Is it the Binance chain? The Binance chain, smart chain, BSS, BSC. That's the phrase I was looking for. The Binance smart chain is clearly getting some interest and intrigue and leading to investment. I don't think it's about their exchange per se, apart from the fact that it's always been dominant. That's been known. It's large. They're doing well on that front. What is key is they've leveraged that to do other things that may actually be saving money, making things more usable. And that's possibly eating a little bit of Ethereum's dinner. Um, so really nice move. You could have been in Binance token down here. 40k once again um, I haven't always spoken particularly with much coverage on Binance token because it seemed to always be marching to its own beat largely um, and it was sometimes quite difficult to technically analyze but I can tell you that isn't difficult to technically analyze we saw it last week and we spoke about it we said it's going to go up this took us a little bit off the scent. There was that period and that was all associated with Bitcoin's uh, sudden weakness but it never spoiled the pattern and it went really low vol. Look at those spinning tops, spinning tops, spinning tops. That is beautiful, my friends. Beautiful volatility. You'll learn the gift of volatility in your trading. If that's anything you get from me for free, it's the most valuable thing you can learn. If someone had given me that much earlier, I tell you, I'd pay him hundreds of thousands uh, for the amount of money I wasted doing dumb things uh, in trading. Absolutely. So take that one as a real key. Write it down. The volatility is your friend. Low volatility to high volatility is the great gift. 
that is it. So you've got into, this is showing into the 60s, and I would expect quite possibly you go well through that. Who knows? 170s, 180s, maybe you do a 200 run, because already it's gone from 40 uh, all the way up to these levels at 128. That's a fabulous move. Binance token really strong. Why don't you leave me a comment? What do you think? What's the key driver? Is it the Binance smart chain? Who thinks they've got a fundamental take on that? I just lost 50, I just locked 50k worth of hex up for four years. Will mature right around the peak of the next four-year cycle. That's not a bad timing, says Pumpet. Uh, mRNA jab will lead to organ failure. That's interesting, but it's quite biological for our crypto feed. But then again, I do encourage that kind of talk, don't I? Um, S fees are the reason, says Wendell. I think he's right. So uh, Ethereum 2.0, it's got to deal with some stuff. They've got, okay, network effect, they first mover, first advantage and all of that. But gas costs, man, listen, if Bitcoin's a store of value and it's going to cost a lot to move money around, but people will largely vault up, that's okay. If you're going to be the utility platform where people are going to be moving around, doing it the everyday, the usage aspect, then you've got to deal with that. And it's, uh, ADA has been getting a big pump. It hasn't even released its smart contracts uh, for competing with Ethereum. So people are recognizing the, the, the space that Ethereum occupies is a very important space. But now there's a lot of people wanting to be that Ethereum only cheaper in cost. You've got what DOT has done. It's retaken other on the crypto market cap. Let's run past it. DOT, you've got their 2.6% uh, up today. It's higher, uh, more than Ethereum um, now at 27 uh, billion wasn't that long ago, you know, when uh, Ethereum was in the, the 20s and the 30s. It feels like a long time ago, but it's gone up about 16 times since the $80 to the virtually 2000. So I'm expecting ongoing powerful performances out of Polka, Cardano. And now it seems like Binance Coin has thrown its hat a little bit in to that chain uh, of competition. So the revolutionist likes Cardano. He's got lots of happy and heartfelt faces uh, and Cardano. Look, when they release, they claim to be ready, faster, better, cheaper, all those things. So when they start doing their smart contracts, maybe they've been laying a great foundation. They've had a massive run. Um, and Charles certainly put his sights on Ethereum and wants to be the Ethereum eater. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, USDT printed 1 billion, says speak your mind. My friend, the sniper, best guy on YouTube and Twitter, says Pextus. Thank you, Pextus. Uh, Tofa Dowling, Solano, thanks for sharing your knowledge, Francis. Yes, that's a pleasure, windsurfer. Just think XRP ripping up. XRP, we'll take a look at XRP. So a couple of tokens I've accused of being the perennial fallers, of which XRP is one. Um, but it could suddenly be right if the central bankers start to use them as a protocol. There's a lot of wild cards that could put these fizzler coins back on the map. Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV have been two others that have been real fizzers. At one point, we traded it a lot and we thought it was uh, had a future. And then the money stopped telling us that. And you know what? We listened to the flows. So that means you're adjusting all the time. Um, so where is SV and uh, Bitcoin Cash? Cash is back holding on in the top 10. There she blows. Link at 10. And then Stella, we got a stable coin. Doggies, that meme is still around. That will dip down, I think. Wrap Bitcoin, uh, Uniswap, Aave, Cosmos, EOS, and SV now almost outside the top 20. Uh, just staying on the right side of 20 is Monero. I'm expected in that 15 to 20 number range. Um, there's been a, a couple of new high flyers that have maybe pushed it a little lower, but don't take your eye off them. Tron at 21, IOTA, NEM, Tezos, Theta, and a few others. Uh, but it's definitely about Dot Cardano uh, of late over the last couple of months. And also to a degree, the DeFi tokens. So those are our big flyers. So let's have a look at that BNB and see, well, how's it doing against Bitcoin? So Bitcoin bled up. This is what's called 360 degree analysis. You can see that while Bitcoin bled up, that got pulled down a bit. So it's not quite so groovy, but still is a similar structure, but a bit flat bottomed. Um, so that's interesting. Bitcoin is just on that bleed up, making it hard to trade, sell off, flush you out on your stops. 
bleed up, bleed up, bleed up. Very light leverage trading is the only way and dip buying. Don't chase new highs. Really, please understand that on your Bitcoin trading. Um, otherwise, you're going to get hurt. So let's uh, talk about the F. Um, again, nice structure. Whoop, let's go into draw mode. So super high one, kind of a complex two. So what we do is we sometimes do a cutout. It turned out there was a whole bunch of skittishness here and we just say ignore. It was a big shooting star up and then a big hammer down. So pump to the top, pump to the bottom and came back up. The whole thing was just a, a whole bunch of notes as they say. Uh, a scare to the up, a scare to the down and back where you started. So. Generally, we would argue you just have a complex second impulse there and down. And then you went super low and you're broken. So BNB is taking some of Ethereum's lunch. It's eating it. It's going to outperform. And we have a target for it. We've done it. We've drawn it. It's going to go up. It's going to go up. It's going to go up. It's going to go up against Bitcoin. It's going to go up against Ethereum. And it's already going up against Tether. So it's set up across the lot. And that was already last week that it was like that. In fact, we thought last week it might run when it was coming up here. And then it got extended and put back. And it got sketchy vol. There, super sketchy. And then it went super tight. That's what happens. It's suddenly an explosion out of the blue of volatility. And then you work your way out to compression. And the compression is the gift. Look how low that was right there. Super, super low. Have a look on any other time frame. See that blow off high, the readings you were getting. Um, so volatility and knowing where you are on that is your friend. So the prediction is Binance to overperform. But you're late. You're late. That means it's hard for you to chase. It's a hard chase. Back to the dollar. It's a hard chase. But the targets are in the 160s. One sixty twos, and we would imagine it's very pretty. Apart from that little sketchy moment, it's very pretty set up. So we could see that going well into the sixties, possibly beyond. Um, so dips can be bought. We had one forty two. That's the strategy. Possibly everything else. I would actually do very little. Do very little. You're grinding up. You should have blue pot investments stuffed with crypto. A lot of Bitcoin. A lot of Ethereum. Uh, five by five of Cardano. A uh, dot uh, of a um, Uniswap and Link potentially. Um, and the rest, trading wise, orange and red pots, I would be square, sit with whatever collateral you have, whether it be in Bitcoin or Ethereum, and wait it out with a possible long trade. If we come back, if this has a little setback and pulls back, it might be an entry to later trade into the 168s. What do you guys want to know about? FBTC, sir. Yes, we can look at FBTC. So I'll have a little refresh for you. FBTC. So what did we say when we were on total? We preferred the look of total for later upside. We preferred the look. You can see that it's been grinding down FBTC. Again, a bit of a wedge. You've got your four level coming. Whoops, let's uh, take that off. You've got your four level there. And you're going to get jacked out of that back up to your four level, my suspicion is. So there's your... Maybe another down leg and then we get a jack up. Something like that to bring you back. Just because you make that key level doesn't mean, uh, which is the 4 percenter, that doesn't mean it turns all easy for you. Uh, and this is what you're finding with Ethereum. And again, it, it, the, the worst thing that happened for the Ethereum BTC trade was you made that marginally higher high. That prevents it being a continuation pattern. It then creates other structures that uh, are more weakening. A marginally higher high is a terrible thing. You either pump through and you go for it and you make proper new ground um, or better to turn before and then set up a wind up structure. You're neither fish nor fowl. You're not getting stronger and waiting your moment to blast 
or you're blasting right through. If you're doing neither, you're kind of like lukewarm. And lukewarm gets spat out. It's bearish. That's what happened. So actually, the FBTC bias, which is a super macro view, we've called the 6.6. .6. Nothing changed there, by the way. It's still there, but you're in a correction point at the moment on that. In other words, that means it's not going your way for a while. But generally, we'll see that overperformance. And what could be the reason why? Dot, Cardano, and now Binance getting capital on the basis that they're moving money around cheaper. But this is your right shoulder. You see that red? That's your right shoulder. That is not a threat to that right shoulder. Eth still is the big guy. And they'll be watching and hearing all the stones that have been thrown at them. And I expect they will respond. There's your head. That was your shoulder low. So you're just a little bit of a pullback down here. Another point about this, technically, whoops, just go back to this and get that other shoulder in, is that you tend to have a kind of a double shouldering, a little bit of a double shouldering. See it here? There, there, there. And then you've got a kind of a cup. I'm wondering if it isn't going to be a little bit the same here. There's your cup and handle shoulders. So there's always an echo, a little bit of an echo. And that's it. You broke away. You were going. You were good. No, you got pulled back. You got pulled back. You got pulled back. Get it right. And then you go. 6.6 .6 remains on the table. No change. Okay. So that's your FBTC take from me. Once this turns, and this might not be a bad time, because you saw total two, it looks better set up than Bitcoin. Total two versus Bitcoin. Once again, short view. By not making a marginally higher high, it's almost better set up than Bitcoin that is. Because Bitcoin is exhausting grinding up. That's it. Let's see what other questions. Dixie chart. So we will cover dollar because it does tie into the um, cryptos. So this is not a market sniper video, um, but dollar is the bridge. It is the fiat of proliferation. Um, and we do sometimes refer to the anti-fiats of gold as well, um, which I don't mind having a look in because they all correlate to a degree. But that's the dollar. And that's also made it a bit of a grind for. So good question, by the way, from the question, who was that, who was that, who was that? Mellow fellow, it says Doc Dixie looking bullish. Well, this is the problem. If the rates are starting to go up on the debt, and that means the debt valuations of the bonds are going down, inverse relationship, what it actually means is they'd be forced to up rates to attract new money in because that real loss in value of fiat proliferation and shit return is really being noticed by folks and they'll go you know what i'll have some bitcoin that doubles every year rather you know or i'll have some of this and in fact it's in a growth stage it'll maybe do a 6x this year so people are making decisions so they've got a problem now if they want to put a, a lid on that they've got to make their investment attractive don't forget as i said in the market sniper video yesterday when we covered platinum which has been um, oversold as underperformed and is now playing catch up in the same way if a bond was originally 140 and the dollar was at 100 DXY and now the bond's at 136 and the same dollar instrument that it's based in is down at 130, uh, um, down at 90, you've lost on both fronts. You've lost for having a dollar-based instrument and it's lost uh, four units from 140 down to 136. It's all round. You've lost 3% in value and your currency's lost 10%. It's quite a shit investment. It's not, you know, all the parameters are going against you. Eventually people say, you know, why am I holding this currency? And why am I holding an asset that's going down? So they have to start pushing the yield up. That will create more demand. Um, that will put the pressure up on gold and silver that doesn't pay anything. Um, and it'll shore up the dollar, which will give the dollar some strength. And that's on this short time frame, one hour. We have seen this before, by the way, many times. Don't be overexcited by it. Um, you'll call a bottom on this one way too many times. We've avoided doing it, but we did draw 
an in, uh, inverted head and shoulders to say, would it be? Um, and largely, I'd say it came very, very close to invalidating and is probably still spoiled for structure, even though it hasn't invalidated. That is the low of the right shoulder. It's almost come um, within moments of running that. Now it's snapped back up. What it would need to do is maybe set up a really convincing continuation pattern. But then the problem changes to a different problem. So Bitcoin would come off a bit if the dollar then spoke, because instead of winning and just beating up a, a crap fiat, the fa fiat starts going up. Bitcoin would have the rest that I think it needs. Remember, I'm talking, it almost needs to clear the deck and have a bit of a drop six or seven grand and have a snapback rally and set up some new structure. Flush some of the weekends out. Um, if the dollar did do this, if it did, um, that would change the problem to swinging the pressure on the likes of the Turkish lira and the South African rand and debt failures. It wouldn't be immediate, but straight away the pressure dynamic would start to change. You've got the rand at 14 and a half, and suddenly they're going to they're going to have a full blown debt crisis in the real world because they've all borrowed in dollars. Now the interest rates goes up and the dollar goes up in value. So the interest they've got to pay becomes a bigger number. The conversion into dollars instead of being 14 and a half rand to a dollar goes back up to 18 or 19. It suddenly starts consuming much more of their budget and suddenly the pressure starts to go on them. They start squeaking about IMF bailouts. Don't forget COVID-19. Just most countries were on the blower asking for money and that's how they controlled. Um, so the, the pressure changes. So you can do this for a while and the dollar can rally for a while and you can save the bond and debt market for a while and a few invest, investment bankers will go, okay, we'll have the debt. That will take some of the sizzle out of silver. We might have a deflationary crisis, the big hackathon from Russia, North Korea, China, done, blah, 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 will occur and half your accounts will be uh, ripped off uh, bank-wise or some, some event, some deflationary event will occur that creates fear. They've already warned you what's going to come and they seem to have an incredible record for guessing. You know, a couple of years ago, they guessed that a coronavirus in flu would come. So much so that they even did a, like a, a test called uh, Agenda 201 in October of 2019. It's incredible last minute preparation for some future event. But anyway, you can decide what you want about those facts. Um, the key of the matter is uh, that a fear event could happen. A lot of people complaining that the U.S. stock market is too overfilled. Well, when you measure it against M2, it's not so much. It is in terms of all normal valuations, PE and everything else. But if you're just flooding the world with money, all assets should go up necessarily because the billionaires buy assets. That's what happens. And they're the ones getting the cheap finance, not you. So that's pretty much our game. So what's the dollar doing? It's currently up. It's currently up quite strongly. Um, and it needs to because people need to be buying dollars and putting money into treasuries because the Chinese doesn't want to do any more of that. They're sitting with a one trillion of it. They'd love to get out of it. The Russians don't want to do with it. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe the Fed is gobbling a whole bunch as well. Self-consuming again, like the snake eating its tail. Um, check out the symbolism on that all you like. Okay, good. What else? So that was the Dixie was interesting. Swiss Borg looks a nice squeeze setup. Would be great if you could check it out. I think that sounds like a equity, Michael. Thanks for the tip. We'll have a little look, but I'm not sure it's for this program. If you keep your digital assets off centralized exchanges, there is capacity for AML tools to track. But we'll see what happens upon a next tax year. LTC chart. Uh, UK capital gains is 10% on basic income tax brand. But higher brand is robbery. Yes. Uh, Edith Driver loves Lagos. It's a great town. Uh, Doc Francis, any thoughts on Theta USDT? So we did, we did give you Theta. I was out of it after it performed. So I haven't been looking at it recently. I'm almost curious to see uh, where it is. So let's see uh, where the theta be. And there was also a shout out for Litecoin. It's continued. Uh, it's a bit like the Bitcoin. It's continued with the support of the crypto. So it went into a rising wedge. So you often finish targets with rising wedges. You see it there. So our target was up top here. You finish with a rising wedge like that. 
It did it with Bitcoin as well. New pop-outs, blow off, and now the volatility comes. Now you're thrashing around. You could even have a head and shoulders there if you pull down. So it's, I'm not, not upset to have got out at 3, especially when you bear in mind I got in at the 1.9s down there on early entry. So quite happy. Remember, you shouldn't get out at the dot high. It's too close for comfort. So great move in the end. Took a bit to come. We were engaged over here already uh, and gone, went for a journey to hell and back a little bit before it went. Um, but that happens. The pattern extends, extends because you need the right market conditions for something to move up. Uh, the pattern extends. So we'll do Litecoin. What else uh, have you got? Swissborg does cash out to your bank account, uh, says KM Mining. He's really keen on that Swissborg. I'll have to have a look. I'll uh, check it out at some point and maybe catch it on the market sniper chip. So Litecoin, kind of been in the quiet there a little bit. Nano we did give you as well, which did real well. We gave you this on the, the crypto sniper. You could have had part of that. And you would have got out. Uh, you would have got out somewhere there. Now we, we what are we doing? It would do great, do great if it had another down there. It could give us another one. So keep it on your watch list. Nano, there you go. You got that one for free. Um, we'll see whether it comes to us. Litecoin is the one we were asked for. Ah, Litecoin had a little bit of structure. It's kind of been lagging a little bit, Litecoin. I'm not overly interested in it. I don't check it very often, but it's kind of stayed in the top 10 as well. It's been sort of resilient in a, in a, in a not quite hogging the headlines kind of way, if that makes any sense. It's kind of, there's always somebody else a little bit more interesting doing a little bit more than it, but it did, uh, it did its falling wedge here as well. This is when Bitcoin was doing it, so it did a very reasonable copycat and then it's also gone up uh, and then that looks pretty promising that's kind of uh, gone uh, so there's a couple of things we're seeing that you would have missed so it could be the outperformer so far My, thank you for sending me there it's actually fairly interesting um, but it has passed it's too late to do anything unless of course you come back down there so let's see if it does a second chance revisit and goes. But that's typical continuation structure that we like. Um, and it has set off on its journey. But looking a little bit steamy. If I compare it to BNB, uh, BNB is certainly the stronger, which is the reason we're here and the one we're telling you about. But unfortunately, that makes it harder to chase. Look at that. That's the difference. That's something that's squeezing higher. Won't be long now and you'll be in the 160s. You could have had it. You could have been a contender. You could have looked at the setup. You could have been in the social chat with the rest of the community. Um, and you could have made 10 grand, 15 grand without having to do a big size at all. Um, okay, links are below if you want to book a chat. Thank you for coming on board. There's 621 of you watching. We appreciate the 242 likes immensely. Um, that's a high percentage. We thank you for that. This is a no advert channel. You regularly get unsubscribed or the always becomes a discretional to Google event. So please, every time you come, check and go always. You often become unsubbed. So support the channels that don't throw adverts in your face because we do not get prioritized. We get deprioritized. Okay, guys, thank you very much for popping on and watching. That was your Crypto Sniper. Um, play safe. I wouldn't chase Binance unless you get a real opportunity on a pullback, but keep an eye on it. Maybe next time it'll cycle back and set up again. So it's one to watch with that uh, smart Binance chain, BSC. Yes, we'll watch that uh, and the high ETH costs. How will that battle end up? We'll talk more. We hope to get someone to interview uh, in and around the crypto platform tokens as well. So now we can throw BNB in there uh, and we'll see fundamentally if there's anything really, really powerful on there. Um, until we talk later, uh, don't do too much. Don't do too much. Let your investment pot sing and do no harm. Do no harm at these times. It's only when you feel high conviction, high probability moments that you should take the trade. You're late to Binance. Bitcoin is grinding up, could be a little stale. Um, be careful out there. Okay, that's our current viewpoint. But we can celebrate together the making of the 50K, the 
the passing of the 1.5 trillion in crypto these are big big money amounts now it's no longer a pocket mouse cottage industry this it's quite a big market cap it's not yet the size of apple's market cap but we will come for apple and we will take them out and that's all that's uh, that all i can say on that thank you very much and with that i say goodbye